Now to talk about this, we have with us Mr. Jason Tejasukmana, the head of corporate communications for Google Indonesia. Hello, Jason, welcome. Thank you. It's great now, to be here. Now, first question. Um, I guess my question is, Indonesia is a mobile first co uh, country. Now, what does that what does that mean? How is that an advantage for Indonesia? So, according to our data, uh, as of last year, Indonesia uh, smartphone penetration was about forty three percent, compared to fifteen percent for desktop which shows you that basically this is a mobile first, if not a mobile only market. Uh, and what that means is most people are accessing the internet only through smartphones. And as the prices of smartphones come down uh, and connectivity gets better, you're gonna have millions and millions and millions of more Indonesians experiencing the internet for the first time, if they haven't already. So that has profound implications for Indonesia, for the way business is done, for the way people learn, for the way they socialize, for the way they get their entertainment, right? So we're in the beginning of, of a real mobile revolution in Indonesia. And you just skipped sort of the desktop era. Now, yeah. is that a, a bad thing or that, does that define our very unique um, I don't. I don't structure. think it's. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's just a different way of for companies like Google and other tech companies and anybody wanting to start their own business to think, right? Where before maybe you could create a website that looked great on a desktop, but when you've got on that small screen, you're having to like pinch and zoom and look for stuff and scroll and take, or pages loading really slow. I mean, it, the way that people interact with their phones versus the way they interact with their desktops is totally different, right? So generally when you're, when you're on a phone, if it's longer than three seconds, uh, it takes longer than three seconds to load, you're gone. You know, forget it, right? With the desktop, you might be hanging out and just sort of doing something else while you're checking out your site. But so that, that compels businesses to think differently about how they do it, right? And you've got more than 50 million uh, small businesses in Indonesia and less than 2% with an online presence. So think about that, right? Once you get all of these businesses sort of familiar with how to, how to do business online, how to advertise their products, how to find customers, it's going to have profound implications for business as well mm -hmm. because then somebody working in Tangerang will have, you know, could maybe sell their products to Pontianak who could then, you know, so you know what I mean? So it's like it's a, it's a, it's a good problem to have. Um, and so Google is trying to help teach best practices and how to create mobile-friendly sites and, uh, and making sure that our products also work great on mobile. But to do this, um, you need developers. You need, you need to know how to code and design uh, your website for mobile and maybe, maybe for desktop as well. And you guys want to develop 100,000 um, or train 100,000 developers by 2020 right. and also 1,000 startups for 2020. Now, now why, why is that? Is that because of the, the reason that, hey, we're going online, let's get there? Yeah, so... This, is, uh, this was uh, our commitment to train up 100,000 developers was announced when President Jokowi came to our campus in Mountain View um, six months ago. So we made the commitment to him there right then and there and said, look, we want to help Indonesia become the largest digital economy in Southeast Asia. And that's one of the stated goals of the government, along with the thousand uh, startups that you mentioned. So to get there, you know, we're, we want to do our part. Uh, we're familiar with the tech world. We have a lot of skills we can offer, a lot of technology, a lot of platforms. So we're doing our best to help. And we hope to get to the 100,000 mark through education programs, online, offline, combination of online and offline to help kickstart the digital economy, which is going to play an increasingly larger role in Indonesia's overall economy. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, right? If we look at e-commerce, online travel, online ride sharing, you know, all of these things are exploding. And we have a new report coming out about that too next week, so all right. stay tuned. And <laughs> now, Accelerator, uh, let's talk about that. Um, you guys have quite a few here. Um, Hijab, uh, Coda Shop. Now, what did they do uh, in June, the second batch right. for June? Uh, what did they get to experience in, in Mountain View and here? It's sort of the mentorship program. Tell us about that. So the Launchpad Accelerator, uh, this was the second round we did where we take a group of mid to later stage uh, startups two mountain views for two weeks, right? So the first batch left in January, there was eight of them, and then they went there for two weeks, they come back, they get six months of continued mentorship in Jakarta with other mentors, both inside and outside of Google, people who are experts in UI, user interface, UX, user experience, uh, marketing, um, business development, all these different areas. And then uh, they just graduated, the first class just graduated, uh, after and it last week mm -hmm. and then the second class just went to Mountain View and did their two weeks and now they're back for six months and we hope to launch a third uh, batch in uh, 2017 early 2017 but basically it just it's to help help them build a community 
uh, amongst themselves and also with other startups from Brazil, India, Mexico, yeah. right? So they all kind of get to know each other's problems and they can share, you know, what their experiences, what they went through, help each other. And that's a beautiful thing about this program is that it's about giving back, right? Now we have some of the class two graduates going, or class one coming to help the class two, and we hope the class two mentoring. people mentoring, right? So like, oh yeah, I had that problem. Yeah, I can help you with that. Or you should try doing it like this, right? So it's a nice community. That, that community is only going to get bigger. But this is only for those that are um, sort of um, in the late stage, I mean, mid stage of yeah. the company. Right. What about someone with, hey, I'm going to start this company. Should I join Accelerator or do you have other programs? There? Right. So the, for the earlier stage startups, we have a program called Launchpad Week, and that is based in Jakarta. Uh, we had 15 startups go through it uh, about, I think it was November, last November. And that is basically teaching them to make a pitch for uh, at the end of their business to help them develop a business pitch in three minutes, hmm. right? To, so they can then t you know, make that next step to become a more established player. So it starts obviously with a great idea, hmm. right? And then how to develop that idea. Right, because lots of people, lots of us have ideas, but then there's like the execution and the design. And there's all these elements at play, and uh, you know, who knows? At some point, maybe they will then apply for the the accelerator program as well. Yeah. Um, but there's there's great talent here. There's tremendous talent, right? And we had hundreds of uh, people applying for it the last time, and only six got it, right? And I, I imagine we're going to have even more, you know, for the next round. Do we expect yeah. um, established startups like? Um Tokopedia and all the big players to join as well uh, as a mentor or is it only for those that, hey, you're just starting? That's a good question. I think those guys are also very active in, in supporting the community. Whether or not they'll go through our program or become you know, official mentors, I don't know, but I'm sure the, we certainly wouldn't mind. Those guys are, are incredible you know, performers and we're certainly, I certainly admire them. Uh, big fans of what, what they're creating and and we're hoping to see you know more and more like that that are going overseas yeah. right that's a beautiful thing about the internet and for any Indonesian company they can start exporting these ideas yeah. right going into moving into Asia Southeast Asia and why not even going like you know hijab one of the startups actually was invited to the London Fashion Week right so they showed on the catwalks yeah. there in London right so you see the power of YouTube the power of the internet right and what they can do with it so yeah, I mean, it's just the beginning, but there's, there's you know, no reason why we're not going to have world-beating startups coming out of Indonesia soon. And what are some things that um, uh, companies like Hijab are, are saying that, hey, this is the, the largest Muslim majority um, country, population country in the world right now. Um, what are some things that Hijab is saying, hey, I learned this about Indonesia. This is a niche market. Or maybe it's not. Um, what would they say? I think, I think uh, from what I've heard, I think they've, they've learned a lot about watching users use their products. I, I noticed they just uh, changed their mobile site to use, um, we have an open source platform called a progressive web app. And the progressive web app is a means of turning your mobile site into something that loads faster, consumes less data, uses less energy, can be used offline, gives you push notifications on this the home screen. This is what's happening in Chrome. Right? right, yeah. Well, actually, it works on any browser, right? But there are certain features that are optimized for Chrome, right? So, like, they just, you know, they, they picked that up, they learned it, and, you know, they, they changed it pretty quickly, right? So, they, I think, you know, they're, they're realizing that there's certain benefits of uh, learning from Google. And, you know, of course, we're learning from them as well and, and how they're using YouTube. Like, the way Hijab uses YouTube is different, right? They, they use it to build brand awareness, right? Like, what they're doing, you know? So, you know, people get their message and what they do, and then they, basically go to the, their website and then they, they buy something. Okay. Right. Uh, Jason, before we go, um, I'm curious about what's next for 2017. What's going to happen in Accelerator uh, next year? And yeah. what, sort of what's, what's the rundown they're going to do? Same plan again? Let's yeah, I think it's going to be a similar structure. I think you know, it's going to be 50K, most likely, yeah, yeah you get your $50,000. Yeah, exactly. Can't forget about that. That's equity free, right? Uh, and they can do whatever they want with that money. It's, obviously, you know, it's a small installment in their future, and it's something that we want to, I think by the time they go through the, the program, they know, okay, this is really what I need to use it for, whether it's for hiring or for a change in the, you know, the interface or whatever. But, uh, it's going to be probably with you know India, Brazil, Mexico, and Indonesia. These are four really important countries for for Indonesia, and uh, we're really excited to see what they do. All right, Jason, thanks so much. Hey, thank you. Thanks a lot. All right.